Still on Twitter, still on Elon Musk, some of the nation's biggest brands, uh, including Coca-Cola, Disney, and Kraft, are facing calls to boycott Twitter if the company's soon-to-be owner, Musk, rolls back content moderation policies, limiting hate speech and election misinformation. Uh, this was uh, in a letter there that was, uh, that's the letter actually, there it is, it's at the bottom there, saying that in bold, we call on you, uh, Twitter's top advertisers, to commit to these standards as non-negotiable requirements for advertising on the platform. Now, Elon Musk didn't take too kind to the letter accusing the writers of being funded by unknown backers who seek to control access to uh, information. And here's a tweet from Musk where he said, uh, who funds uh, these organizations that want to control your access to information? Let's uh, investigate. And in the follow-up tweet, uh, Elon Musk then suggested that Twitter could charge governments and businesses to use the platform. And here are a couple tweets in, in question where he says the downfall of the Freemasons was giving away their short stone-cutting services for nothing and then Twitter will always be free for casual users but maybe a slight cost for commercial and government uh, users. Ifai OTC who is an analyst with Financial Derivatives Company Limited joins us to discuss further. Thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon. Um, the civil society groups that are calling for uh, uh, the big brands to possibly boycott Twitter if content moderation standards are lowered. What, what do you make of their, their stance? Um, so like you rightly said at the beginning they have asked big brands to um, several their commitments with Twitter if Twitter fails to um, maintain the current content standards. Now, I would say that they have a case because Elon Musk has gone on to say that he would guarantee free speech. Now, the concept of free speech is nuanced. Um, I would say that um, should freedom of expression be absolute? That's a question people need to answer. Mm. Now, should also anybody, individuals, corporations, governments, should people be allowed to say whatever they want to say, whenever they want to say it, however they want to say it, without giving any regard to how um, what they say affects other users? These are things to consider. So I would say, yes, they do have a case. Um, that's something to consider. Twitter in the future should seek to protect the interests of the vulnerable and the marginalized on its platform and just see that everyone um, collaborates and works together to just see that there's um, not necessarily comeback or issues on the platform, but yeah. everybody works together to um, make sure that they use the platform in a safe and good way. Yeah. All right, so that's that. So if they have a case, you say they have a case. What about Musk, him coming back and saying, well, you know, are these being funded by groups that want to control speech? Well, what do you make of his stance? Huh. Um, <laughs> I think the people who lead these groups are people who are genuinely concerned about how um, the implications of removing these content moderation policies would affect the vulnerable and the marginalized, like I said earlier. So I don't think they're funded by people who want to limit free speech per se, because you see changes to policies, no matter how small, can have disproportionate implications on users. So you've seen cases where people um, have taken information online and then acted out either negatively or positively offline, and it's had different effects on people. So I, I don't think it's funded by people who want to um, limit free speech, but it's funded or led by people who are generally worried and concerned about how removing these policies will affect other people. All right. Uh, Musk also saying that Twitter is going to be free for casual users, but they might, they might charge a fee for governments and businesses. What, what, what do you make of that if that was to happen? Uh, that all boils down to monetization. So you've seen that Twitter has made um, a lot of its revenue from ads. I think it's about 86%. And then the um, remaining 14% has come from data licensing. So now with Musk on board, he's looking for alternative sources um, to raise revenue. Now, if you pay attention to... Um, governments and corporations and their posts on Twitter, you see their advertising, they are announcing new changes to policies and just disseminating information on the platform. Now, if Twitter decides to charge them, I believe these companies might want to do a cost-benefit analysis. So um, the benefits essentially would be the ability to reach a wider network, the ability to communicate more with people, um, and just disseminate information on the platform. Now, the cost would essentially be how much Twitter charges right. them. So if they do a cost-benefit analysis and if the benefits outweigh the costs, then it's possible that they would be inclined to pay. Now, if the reverse is the case, they might consider other, other options. Now, it would be interesting to see whether Twitter will apply the same cost structure for governments, the same cost structure for businesses, um, big businesses, smaller 
businesses, mid-sized businesses. And then let's also pay attention to the fact that companies now use influencers who are mostly individuals. Mm. So would they be charged for working for the That's companies? Question, yeah. um, these are things I would like to see, and these are developments that I'm sure everyone else is interested in. Yep. See what Mr. Musk uh, decides. Uh, Airbnb, what do you make of their first quarter um, performance? Oh, their first quarter performance is stellar. You can see it's also as a result of travel rebound. So people are going out more, people are be having more uh, flexible travel, travel plans. So. They're wanting to explore new places. You see some of them are staying longer um, at hotels. Uh, not really hotels, I'm sorry. They're staying longer at Airbnbs. Right. Some are living there now. Um, so it's really interesting to see how, after the pandemic, everybody's outside. Everybody's doing what they should have done or what yeah. they wanted to do during right. the pandemic. So that's really interesting. So like you said, they had about 70% um, increase in their revenue, mm. went up to about $1.5 billion. Their free cash flow went up to $1.2 billion. They were able to reduce the net loss to $19 million, which is significantly lower than what they reported for 2019 and 2021. Yeah. So that's really good. That's really uh, good. And what do you make about the decision to allow employees to basically work from home forever or from wherever in the world that they are? I think that's a welcome development. Seeing as all or major companies around the world were forced to work remotely during the pandemic and advancements in technology helped that greatly. So you'd see that more companies, especially startups, are welcoming the idea of working remotely, having people report from different parts of the world so long as they're able to meet their targets and they are productive. Now, something to consider is how to monitor these people, or how to monitor employees to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do yeah. when they're supposed to do it. So that's something to consider. So, yeah. Well, I, you've preempted my next question. So is that because I, I mean, that would be the, you know, how would you do that? I mean, is it using particular standards to make sure that they're meeting their KPIs or how, how would you do that? Definitely. So I would make sure that there's an agreement before people go out or go start working from home. So there's an agreement where we say, OK, fine, these are your targets. These are your deliverables and you have to meet them. And then there'll be someone who they report to as well. So you're not just doing things at your own free will, you're reporting to somebody, there's someone who's checking that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And then if people work in different time zones as well, that's something to consider. So are we working, you know, in a particular time zone? Or do people have to stay awake at certain points? That's a sacrifice that you would have to make mm. in exchange for, you know, working from the comforts of their home. So for Airbnb, for example, you see Brian Chesky saying he trusts his employees, seeing as they were able to deliver um, and accomplish a lot during the pandemic. So you'd see, even though they were plagued by the pandemic, they rebuilt the company from the ground up. They were able to restructure the company. They went public. I don't know if you paid attention to the I IPO about mm, two years ago. Right, so they went right. public. Um, and, and, and now they've delivered a stellar performance in terms of results for first quarter 2022. So you can see, regardless of the fact that they were working from home, they achieved all of this. And I'm sure they were things in place and, you know, checks in place in the company to make sure that everybody worked together to achieve the goals of the company. Great yes. stuff. Uh, Ifai OTC, uh, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Thanks for uh, talking tech with us this afternoon. Appreciate it. Thank you.